Hello and a very warm welcome to the British Grand Prix. This is round eight on the calendar of 19. It's a bit blustery, but the sun is shining. It's a glorious day for racing and it's a home race for so many of the teams. So what's it like as a driver to win your home Grand Prix? Well, we can speak to double Silverstone winner. David Coulthard, my colleague, what is it like? It must be amazing. It is amazing, and that sounds so nice to hear that, a double winner. I'm so proud to have won this Grand Prix. You know, all of the drivers stay, well, certainly the British drivers all stay on site. That's exactly what I used to do. So you have family support, you have tremendous crowd support, and it's like a festival feeling at Silverstone. It's so much more than a normal Grand Prix. And can you hear the crowd? You can. I remember passing uh, Alesi in the Ferrari down at Stoke Corner, and you could hear the crowd cheering above the noise of the engine, which kind of put me off for a moment because you're not expecting that. But there's so much energy, and uh, as I say, the crowd are tremendously supportive. Any added pressure? When you're in the car, you don't think about that at all. You're just doing your job. But certainly out of the car, you're aware of all the extra support, people wishing you well, uh, demands on your time. And that definitely drains. You know, it's, it's a lot more tiring being at the British Grand Prix than, say, being at the Japanese Grand Prix. But so worthwhile if you win it. Absolutely. That's what makes it special. Well, let's take a look at the champions then and see how they are standing at the moment. Sebastian Vettel is leading the way on 132 points, 36 points ahead of Fernando Alonso. So there's some chasing to be done. Kimi Raikkonen on third in terms of the Brits, Lewis Hamilton fourth, Paul de Resta eighth and Jensen Button rounding out that top ten. Red Bull are on a charge in the Constructors' Championship, uh, 56 points ahead of Ferrari and it's tight then down to Mercedes with Lotus and Force India still ahead of McLaren. Well, we'll have all the race action for you in a minute but first of all, here's the story of qualifying. The grandstands were packed and the sun almost shining as qualifying got underway at Silverstone. One of the first big names to fall was Jensen Button, who couldn't find any pace in the car. His P11 and Sergio Perez 14th means no McLaren qualified in the top 10 for their home Grand Prix. Ferrari didn't do much better either. Felipe Massa went out in Q2 and whilst Fernando Alonso did make it into Q3, he was left frustrated as his championship rivals went faster. Daniel Ricciardo made the most of his shop window in his Toro Rosso, the sister team to Red Bull, who are looking for a replacement driver for Mark Webber next season. He starts an impressive sixth. Another driver making the most of his situation was Paul De Resta, who used home advantage and a pretty quick car to put him fifth. After qualifying though, the stewards found his car to be one and a half kilos light. His time was disqualified and he now has to start from the back of the grid. The Red Bulls are traditionally quick round Silverstone, but double winner Mark Webber could only manage fourth, whilst his teammate Sebastian Vettel was third. That left the Mercedes to battle it out, and it was Lewis Hamilton who put in a stunning lap, getting pole position and the new lap record round this track. Uh, the support here has been incredible, so a big thank you to everyone. You know, um, it means the world to me to come here and, and to be able to put on the front row for them, you know, because they're always so supportive every year. And this is the first year I've really had the car to, to put it where I've put it so I'm so proud and proud of the team. So Mercedes lock out the front row of the grid and then come the Red Bulls. Because De Resta is disqualified it means everyone moves forward. Ricardo is fifth and Suttil is now the highest place force India in sixth. Then come the Lotus cars and Fernando Alonso moves up to ninth and onto the clean side of the grid. Button now makes it into the top ten. Massa is 11th with Perez behind. Maldonado is the highest placed Williams in 15th with his teammate Bottas alongside. Pick and Bianchi are followed by Max Chilton who makes his home race debut. Van de Garda takes a penalty from Canada and is 21st with a frustrated De Resta starting a long way from where he qualified. The British Grand Prix of 2013 is all set to get underway at Silverstone. Lights out, away we go, and Lewis Hamilton lights up the rear tyres, but it's Rosberg who is very slow away, and it's a good start for Vettel. Vettel chasing up, but a bad start. A contact behind there, was that one of the Toro Rossos? We'll have to keep an eye on that, but it's certainly a great, great start for Lewis Hamilton, the perfect getaway needed, but as you say, it's all fighting behind him, Mark Webber's dropped it's, back. I think it was contact with Mark, actually, Ben. Yeah, and look at the Lotus and the Ferrari managing to work their way through. Kimi Raikkonen with Felipe Massa tucked in behind him there. Kimi Raikkonen has had an excellent getaway, no doubt about it. But Lewis Hamilton has got the start that he was hoping for. Vettel second. Rosberg is in third place then. Weber dropping down a little bit. He is, where is he? He's way down. Weber has come through in 15th place. 
So it has all gone wrong for the Australian here on board with Fernando Alonso as he chases after Romain Grosjean and Jensen Button. Well, this is so difficult in this phase of the race. They're heavy with fuel. The tyres have lost temperature. The car will be banging against the deck. And all the time, you're trying to make progress while someone's attacking you from the rear. Felipe Massa has made a remarkable start here because he is now running in fifth position, Felipe Massa, but he started down in 11th, so that is astonishing. I'm quite sure how he's managed to do that. Got a little wobble there from Jensen Button. He's got Fernando Alonso honing in on the back of him. He got to cut the curve in the middle of Beckett's. Hamilton then from there Bethel. There Alonso's coming. Yeah, here comes Alonso trying to get past Jensen Button, and he's down the inside into Stowe Corner, but Button staying with him on the outside. In the end, he has to give it up. No brave stuff for Jensen, but he just runs out of space on the exit. Well, Jensen Button has seen Grosjean go through, but... Uh, sorry, Alonso go through. Let's see what the positions are then as they cross the line. It's Hamilton, Vettel, Rosberg. Sutil still running well in fourth place, then Massa in fifth. Raikkonen, after a good first lap. Ricardo lost out a bit on that first lap. Then it's Grosjean, Alonso and Jensen Button in the top ten. Well, just uh, updating Mark Webber, who's got damage to the front wing, as we see the Lotus going way, way too deep as he run as Grosjean over-breaking, or out-breaking himself from the run into the farm section. So Mark Webber's got damage to his front right end plate. Uh, will he stay out or will he have to pit? It's already a difficult afternoon as Alonso's in the slipstream. Yeah, that's Grosjean, he's trying to pass in the Lotus. He's going around the outside into the Brooklyn's left-hander, but no, he can't do that. Grosjean covers the line side by side once again into Luffield, just inches separating the two cars. OK, Matt, we can see front wing damage. It looks the same as Canada. And Alonso through. Alonso's got past Romain Grosjean into eighth place. Yeah. Let's take another look at the start now, David. Right, let's just watch the left-hand side. Lewis Hamilton actually got a lot of wheel spin as he came off the line, but once it bit, he launched away, and look at that massive start. Nico Rosberg struggling, and there's Mark Webber. He actually gets sideswiped. Is that with uh, the Lotus? Hits him and pushes him wide. Now, I don't want to take any flag here, but I'm going to hazard a guess that might have been Grosjean. We'll have to take another look. They have had their incidents in the past, haven't they? And then that was up through Village and the loop, this tight section. Fairly clean up there. Grosjean hit the rest up there last year. There. Who is in the Lotus there? Just yeah, Grosjean in the middle. Yeah. Mark Webber there. He's down in 12th place. He's now bearing down on Jetson Button. Two uh, good mates, of course, who've been around in Formula One a long, long time. Closing up a lot on the hangar straight. Look at the difference in speed. And he's going to have a go at getting past, and he does. Now, that really interests me, because normally Red Bulls are not so quick in a straight well, he line. He runs wide, Mark Webber, but it's also compounded by the fact there's a slight headwind on the hangar straight. And it's, uh, it's kind of coming across uh, left to right as you look down the straight. And that's why, uh, you know, Jensen Button runs into that headwind. And you can see the offset in the actual distance between the cars. Jensen with no DRS, Mark Webber with DRS wide open. Yeah. Cars are still heavy with fuel at this phase. Well, the DRS was more effective than I was expecting there. Oh, what a tie gone! And it's Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton! Hamilton is out of the British Grand Prix, surely, unless he can get back to the pits, but he's out of the chance for winning this race. Yeah, and that's... real drama here for... Lewis Hamilton, the crowd watching, can't believe it. This is unbelievable. It's happened to him on the way down Wellington Street, which is about as far away from the pits as you would ever want. And uh, unfortunately for Lewis, he's got a long way back to the pits. We saw a tyre failure on Perez's car through free practice. We were told that was a cut in the tyre due to some debris or catching a kerb. So presumably, Pirelli are going to say it's the same thing here, doing a lot of damage to the rear bodywork on that car. Oh dear, oh dear, Ross Braun as impassive as ever as he watches from the pit wall. But their chance of seeing Hamilton win this race is over and he looked like that was, he's not going to get much further with that car. Rosberg still in the race, of course, he's now in second place. Sebastian Vettel is now the race leader and with a two second lead over Nico Rosberg. But Lewis Hamilton's dreams of winning the British Grand Prix are over for another year. He's got that one victory in 2008 but it's proving hard to repeat it. Here we go then, David, let's this see. This has just come out onto the Wellington Street. He'll be up through fifth gear, sixth gear, and you can see it's a, 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 a sort of absolute failure there. It just loses pressure. And as the car squirms around, it then just explodes the tire as it overheats the edge of the corner. So there's the kink onto Wellington. Just watch the steering. You can see it looked like a slow puncture, actually, because he was already correcting into it. 
as he went on to the Wellington and then it's just absolutely imploded. Well, Vettel actually had to take some avoiding action there as bits of rubble were being fired at him, so did Rosberg. Uh, it does mean that Vettel now leads this race by 2.2 seconds into the pits. He's made it into the pits. I wondered if he was going to, putting a set of hard tyres on, but how much damage has been done to the back of the car? Well, they have a quick look and they send him on his way once again. But uh, hopefully there's not too much damage around that rear floor area. That is very prone to bits of rubber flying around, but he's on his way once again and he'll get a feel for the car. Meanwhile, Adrian Sutil in the Force India is in third place. What a fantastic result this could be, but it's very early days, and he's got the might of Ferrari behind him in the shape of Felipe Massa. Kimi Raikkonen is running in fifth place, and Daniel Ricciardo is in sixth position as Massa just getting that little bit closer and having a think about it, but but not going through just yet. Well, it's a very late apex at Stoke Corner, so unless you've committed your car to at least halfway along your competitor, then you know simply you have to bail out of it. So sensible stuff from Massa that puts him under a little bit of pressure now from uh, Raikkonen and the Lotus as they come out onto the start finish straight. So Sutil holding on to that third place at the moment. Grosjean has come into the pits. Roman Grosjean has come in, so uh, they've gone for a stop on lap 10. That would sort of indicate perhaps they'd be going for three stops, but you never know. They might do two long stints with the Lotus. Gary. Thanks uh, for coming back. We've uh, seen a drama with tyres again, and what are your thoughts on that? Well, it did look like it was a puncture again. I mean, the tyre was deflated, the tread was all on it. Uh, oh, it's got Massa! Massa's gone off, and he was right behind Suto, remember? What is the cause of that? And it's a puncture, but is that the cause, or did that go? We have to wait for the replay. I'd say that's the cause as well, to be honest. You know, same thing, left rear tyre. So either there's something out there that's cutting the tyres on the curbs, or there's some real drama going on. The left rear tyre here, Gary, is, that is taking a lot of load, of course. Let's take another look. It's the same area of track, out of Aintree Corner, onto the Wellington straight, and it actually goes through the Aintree Corner and gave him no chance. Yeah, no chance there at all. Just, you know, left rear, obviously, whenever it goes, that's, that's it. But, you know, we need to look. He wasn't on the kerb too much on the inside, I didn't think. Take another look. Fairly standard line. Oh, and it goes before he even yeah, gets halfway through. It goes before he even gets to the curb, so and there's some debris out there, but I don't know, only Mark Webber's wing end plate, really, that's the only thing. Well, two cars affected by punctures or deflations of some sort, whether it's caused by, as you say, bits of debris from perhaps the front wing of Mark Webber's car or other bits that might be on circuit, whatever it is, it's very dramatic. We've lost both Hamilton from the lead. Hamilton is back out and running in last place. And we've now got to see whether Massa makes it back. Well, nervous times for Pirelli as we see Ferrari Alonso coming in. And I wonder if we'll see a number of teams bail out of any possible two stop to just cover the fact that maybe with this heavy weight, you see Mark Webber getting his nose changed, it's obviously affecting the balance of the car too much. So let's just see if anyone else decides to try and uh, make this a three stop this afternoon. I almost wonder if, uh, if there are concerns about debris, whether that was part of it. They don't want that wing disintegrating anymore. Uh, so they put a new front wing on for Mark Webber. He rejoins. He comes back out in 14th uh, position. And, uh, well, Hamilton is running down at the back. Massa is back out on circuit as well. He has rejoined. And, in fact, uh, he is, of course, now running in the last place. And De Resta there, you can see, has come out uh, where Mark Webber... or is where Mark Webber has come out. So Mark Webber in 14th place. There's Paul De Resta. And there is Massa. Uh, well, sorry, he hasn't actually made it in yet. I hadn't realised he hadn't made it into the pits yet. So it's been a slow, slow run round to the pit lane for Felipe Massa. Same situation. I wonder how much damage has been done to the back of the car. But Ferrari about to have a look. Well, uh, we noticed there the, da the actual debris of his tyres hanging on the inside rim, which is what we saw in Perez through free practice. So that will flap around and damage the floor. For Hamilton, it was in the outside of the rim. And they're having problems seating that tyre there. He uh, had his foot off the brake before the car went on the ground. Well, that's just a, a, a driver no-no. You're always told, keep your foot on the brake until the car hits the deck, because uh, there could be a man with a gun and his hand stuck in there. So, so Vettel is on prime tyres. We believe he is on a three-stop strategy. Ah, that's interesting. They believe that he's on a three-stop, and I wonder if Mercedes are on the same. We'll have to wait and see. Look at these guys all fighting. John Eric Vern fending off Romain Grosjean, which is allowing Kimi Raikkonen to get ever closer. 
Well, John Eric, not only fighting for track position, but of course the opportunity to put his name forward to replace Mark Webber for next year. Daniel Ricardo was the shining light after qualifying. Okay, Roman, Kimi is faster than you. Kimi is faster than you. <laughs> now, there's a comment we've heard on the radio before, very famously in Ferrari days, and it looks as though Grosjean may well allow Raikkonen to overtake. Tire. Tire gone on Fern, right in front of Raikkonen and Grosjean. Well done, Jean-Eric Fern. He manages to go straight. That is the third tyre failure we have seen so far today. This is shocking, shocking. We do not expect to see this in Grand Prix racing, but thankfully, Fern gets into the pit lane. At least his failure happened just before the pit lane. Well, well held, that man. And this, as you say, Ben, this is exactly what you don't want to see in Grand Prix racing. Tire failures are very unpredictable, and uh, the drivers are doing a fantastic job of holding it. We had a message earlier from Red Bull that they, uh, they were thinking that the tires were being damaged in the turn four kerbs, but clearly that's happened at full speed and hangar straight. They are using the kerbs through Beckett's, so all the drivers, as those brave marshals, get out there to clear the debris. And if we get much more debris on the track, we could well see a safety car. Let's take another look and concentrate on the car in front. We were watching the battle behind. Well, the corner, the sidewall of the tyre, just it loses its structure. And then at that point, the tyre at that speed, 190 miles an hour, there's just no way that it can maintain its structure. It's probably got a slight puncture already at this point, and then you just see it delaminates, the whole surface comes off the tyre. And, uh, well, incredibly well held. This is, uh, this is the view from onboard Kimi Raikkonen as he was trying to get past Grosjean. Look at the shrapnel being fired at him. Oh, his helmet was being hit by bits of debris. Now, that tyre is made up of bits of Kevlar and you know, metal and things like that to hold it together, so that is not pleasant at all. Oh, we've got safety car on track, safety car is on circuit, so, uh, Tom, it's, it really has been pretty frantic. Ben, it has, there's been so much action. I was just wanting to comment on, uh, of course, both tyre compounds have now gone, and, um, and what's been remarkable is that there's been very little bodywork damage to any of the cars, because cast our minds so back to free practice. Left rear tire, previous six. You've got to stay off the curbs as much as best as you can. There are punctures all around. Exactly, stay off the curbs. Because I was just going to comment on Sergio Perez's failure that he had in free practice, which the team thought was on a curb, and, and uh, he had to replace his rear wing, his floor, everything coming back at uh, the rear of the car when coming back to the pit lane. So the three guys have been very lucky so far. This is here a replay again of. John Eric Verne's rear tyre failure and the debris there going into Kimi Raikkonen's car. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that found its way into his radiators, which, you know, they all run on the limits for cooling, so that may affect the Lotus this afternoon. And, uh, well, this isn't something to really practice, changing a torn-to-piece tyre, but given what we've seen this afternoon, you know, maybe the teams have to look at this in the future. OK, Sebastian, it's been a bit... Busy the last few laps, uh, there has been some punctures on at least three cars, mostly left rear tyre. It's on the inside shoulder. At this point, we're not sure whether it's a tyre problem or a curbing problem. So we'll deal with the tyres from our side. From your side, try to stay away from the curbs and try to save your left rear tyre. This was Lewis Hamilton leading the race. This is what happened to him. Yeah, you can see that the actual sidewall, the inner sidewall, has just completely broken away from the surface of the tyre, and then it's let go. Uh, lower speed than what we saw with jean eric Verne, but nonetheless, he still would have been around 150 miles an hour. This is... Um, this is the second one now, Felipe Massa. Massa. No, this is coming out of Turn 4, runs onto the kerb with the outer tyres, but it's actually the inner tyre shoulder that lets go, and thankfully for him, plenty of tarmac runoff. And then look at the damage being done to the floor as all of the, the sort of belt of the tyre and sidewall has gone to the inside of the wheel. So it's really, you know, just in the luck of the racing gods. And then jean Enric Verne once again. Well, it's Pirelli, unfortunately, are just in the news too, too often, really, for, for this to be a comfortable situation for them. So, another stage of the race. They've had, obviously, a, plenty of time to back off a little bit as everybody just gets a feel for the tyres. Uh, and really, that's what it's more about than trying to heat the tyres at this point. Yeah, and that's his race engineer, Rocky, who was giving him that message. He can only know, of course, how Mark was uh, saving fuel, and it looks like he's gone early, not even out of Stow Corner. And that'll have caught the field out, because they would have expected him to sort of back it up down into club. 
And that just strings them out a little bit. So, well, clever move. It wouldn't surprise me if they've discussed this in their pre-briefings. You know, if we get a safety car, if we're leading, when do we go? So DRS disabled for the moment, and it's certainly a great restart from him. Sergio Perez and Mark Webber going side by side a little bit there. Perez defending his position, and uh, Webber not able to get through. Remember, Webber's car is back to full fitness now after having that front wing change, and the safety cars helped him, and he goes deep and wide. He's got Jensen Button chasing him. Well, he's got no DRS, of course, to help him, but he'll be in the slipstream down the Wellington Strait as Perez struggles to get his car tuned in to this restart he's going defensive will mark around the outside we've seen him do it before Weber does go around the outside of Paris that's how he took the lead here last year on Alonso he loves that line and it works good job watch out for exit curbs high speed corners with your left rear so meaning a good job was the restart because that worked brilliantly well that just shows how much information is going to the driver he's not even halfway around the lap all the adrenaline pumping of a restart, and he's getting cam messages from the engineer. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, in second place, there is Nico Rosberg. Sutil under pressure from Fernando Alonso. This is going to be interesting to watch over the next few laps because the Ferrari has been looking good. That's right. It'll be interesting to watch just who's brave enough to ignore the message on kerbs. You will go faster if you can use the kerbs. It's going to pick up this slipstream very late. It's going to be too late to overtake into Stowe. Will he try and cut back slightly, get early on the power? and run it down into Clark, but I don't think on this lap. Sutil has plenty of experience. He's only ever scored points on one occasion here at Silverstone in the past, but driving well on his return to Formula One so far this year, and so far keeping Alonso behind. De Resta, by the way, still running in 11th place. Well, no one seems to be avoiding the curves completely. If you look at the images, they're running well beyond the red and white, what's called negative Vallelunga curves, and in some cases, running out onto the green concrete. And, uh, well, small walk-up from Sutil there as he went down into Farm Corner. DRS still disabled. How much curb being used? Alonso used a bit of curb on the inside of the left-hand red entry, that flat-out kink, but uh, he seems to still be pushing to try and catch the Force India. This is allowing the cars up ahead to make a bit of a break again. Vettel and Rosberg separated by 1.3 seconds. But they've opened up a two-second lead now over Adrian Sutil. On board with Hamilton here. Now Hamilton working his way oh. through. My goodness, that was close with Gutierrez. That is for 13th place, and they almost made contact. They did indeed, but good. Uh, it was almost like a delayed reaction from Gutierrez. He had his moments about a quarter of a second after he almost had contact with Lewis. Lewis going for the cheeky little pass there. Didn't come off this lap, but he'll just find his way back into position here as he goes through Beckett's. Expect to see him close up through the left and the right. Can he get early enough on the power? Well, a bit too big of a gap at the moment to that Sauber. Straight line speed in the Sauber, not too bad. Uh, DRS will be enabled as they come across the line this time. We do know he loves overtaking at Silverstone. There was a famous race before he got to Formula One in the GP2 category, in which he overtook a huge number of cars. Brilliant drive it was uh, back in 2006. And uh, he knows how to overtake here at Silverstone but he's got to get on with it if he wants to get some points because he's down in 14th place at the moment. And there's the battle for seventh, we see, between Ricardo and Weber. Weber now in eighth place, but bearing down on fellow Australian Daniel Ricardo. There you go, DRS enabled now. You'll start to see some passes. Cars as well have burned off uh, just around 50 kilograms of fuel, so for the drivers, a very small passenger getting out of your car and uh, it just gets a little bit more nimble. You can brake later, turn in sharper, accelerate more quickly, and the smile increases on the driver, driver's face as these cars get faster through this Grand Prix. So Vettel leads this race, and we are just over the half distance mark now. Lewis Hamilton led away from pole position, but suffered a tyre failure. We then saw tyre failures for Felipe Massa, who made a brilliant start and was running top five. He has dropped down to the back of the field. Both of them are still in the race. We saw a third tyre failure for John Eric Verne. He is currently struggling with a car that is not handling as well as it should do. But all 22 cars that started this race are still running. There is the big gap back to third. Adrian Sutil, fourth, Alonso, fifth, Raikkonen. And Daniel Ricciardo, from being under pressure from Mark Webber, suddenly he's now the one putting pressure on Grosjean. We'll look down the inside. I wonder if Webber made a mistake on that lap because he was much closer when we last saw them 
but uh, suddenly somewhere he seems to have dropped away again and Weber finding it difficult despite the Red Bull having a good speed advantage here, it's proving hard to make the most of it. Hamilton is, uh, is behind De Resta now. Uh, where is Hulkenberg gone? So he, Hulkenberg has made a second pit stop, right, so that got the Sauber out of his way, and now Lewis Hamilton is right behind Paul De Resta. And a much quicker car, look how much faster he is on the brakes, massive gain in performance there, and Paul De Resta having to take a wide line as he prepares for the run down Wellington Straight. That gives him a very good entry, so strategically, that was a good play from Paul. Ricardo gets past Grosjean, so Daniel Ricardo claims sixth place. Well, he's flying at this point, he managed to stay ahead of Mark Webber, and now Daniel Ricardo's gone past the Lotus. And Perez, that's allowed him to stay close to the rear of Mark Webber as he go down past the old start-finish straight into Cops. Perez in ninth, yes, Jensen Button in tenth place, so both McLarens in the points. And Jensen, how are the front tyres? Are they great? Front left, yes, a little, but I also have four traction. So front and rear. Yeah, that's consistent with the message he gave earlier, and there's some debris on the track, that's some carbon, so someone's had some contact somewhere around the lap. And that's obviously a very worrying sign, Alonso attacking for third place there, and I wonder whether this could mean another safety car, because it's almost impossible to rush out and get that in the middle of the approach to Stowe Corner. Yeah, there is a bit of a gap between Vettel and Max Chilton, who's running in last. Vettel goes through turn one, Chilton is on the exit of Cops Corner, so in the meantime, we've just got to hope that the drivers are able to all avoid it. Let's see if we can find out where the debris came from. We're watching... Oh, it, it was uh, well, ahead of Maldonado. Yeah, it was the uh, Sauber, I believe, was running in front, and that looks like a major failure on the front wing of Gutierrez. The Ferrari team have brought Fernando Alonso in. They reckon that they can get to the end of the race on this next stint, I would think, all the way to the end. And uh, that should be just about achievable. They'll have to monitor it. Maybe it's uh, asking too much, but you would think that they'll try and do that. Raikkonen going very quickly out there. Oh, and Alonso pretty close to the white line and the exit of the pits there, pushing all the time. Grosjean, pretty good stop, 2.8 seconds very much in the ballpark amongst the fastest. Two and a half seconds, I think we saw for Sebastian Vettel on the first sequence of pit stops earlier in the race. So the two McLarens going through virtually together. They're running ninth, uh, eighth and ninth now. De Resta, by the way, is into the top ten, but that is partly because others ahead have made pit stops. And there is Hamilton right behind De Resta. Yeah, the pit time will cost you about 14 seconds. Zanica, you're doing a good job there to close down. Vettel, you're half a second a lap quicker than him. Yeah, I was going to say, it cost you about 14 seconds of track time. So, come the Vettel and Rosberg, well, certainly Vettel could get in and get back out again in front of Daniel Ricciardo running in fifth. And as we heard there from the engineer, Rosberg, fastest man on track. And uh, closing that gap down to Vettel, uh, who got to expect to react to that fairly soon. Now, Alonso's release. Yeah, it could be an unsafe release. So we'll box this lap, box this lap. And Jensen Button obviously going to be make, making his pit stop. They're currently running in seventh place. Look how much Hamilton closes up the gap, but then he's into the dirty air behind the Force India. Now, this was where he obviously had a bit of a go on the last lap, but he's not quite close enough. Uh, De Resta a bit deep there. He, he just missed the apex. That'll give Hamilton a bit of confidence. And look who's catching them behind them. It is Kimi Raikkonen on a fresh set of tyres, so that's why another reason that Hamilton will want to get on with this. Yeah, the top speeds of the Force India and the Mercedes was very similar in qualifying. 3.08 for the Mercedes, 3.07 in the speed trap for the Force India. So Paul driving strategically and backing them up, and he's trying to do everything he can to maximise his drive off the corner and try and break the DRS. See how Raikkonen is in front of Alonso, so that pit stop, the early pit stop for Lotus, worked really effectively from that point of view, but now Alonso's got DRS on the Lotus ahead as Hamilton still tries to get past De Resta. This is going to be interesting. Right, well, we know, we know De Resta's going to be coming in at the end of the lap. I wonder if Hamilton's been told that yet, but a wheel spin for Hamilton, and that allows Raikkonen to get right up beside, alongside virtually the Mercedes. He's going to have a run into Cobb's corner. Kimi Raikkonen dives down the inside of Lewis Hamilton. And, and watch out for Ferrari. Alonso's going to follow through as well, and Hamilton can't do anything about it. No, he's on tyres that are that much older, and he just can't respond. 
Well, unusual. He put everything into trying to get past Paul Dresser, burned his tires, just got overheating on the surface, and that's uh, left him vulnerable to those two cars. Here comes Alonso on the Lotus. This is crucial. Alonso trying to get past Kimi Raikkonen, but he can't do it. He's forced to the outside. They're behind De Resta, but we think De Resta will be coming in. Yeah, he heads to the pit lane, but Alonso's still all over the back of the Lotus here. Well, meanwhile, up front, you've got uh, Vettel has responded and has been able to maintain that gap at 3.1 to Rosberg. So it's nip and tuck. This is crucial. Sutil in the pit as Raikkonen and Alonso are dicing going past them. This is where we see whether Sutil can hang on to third place or not. And I'm not sure he's going to be able to do Resta comes in as well. It's a double stop for them. But Raikkonen and Alonso have already got out ahead of Sutil. So Sutil has dropped a couple of places there. So Vettel leads this race, he hasn't yet made his final stop. Rosberg is second, now Vettel responds. Vettel is in the pits, so this is going to be the, the moment. I think Vettel had enough in hand coming in that he will come out ahead of Raikkonen. Got to be a good stop, of course. And that was the usual efficiency from Red Bull. That was a brilliant stop. Lovely stuff, 2.6 seconds stationary. Now, where is Raikkonen? Well, I can tell you Raikkonen's only just turning into the veil. Vettel is clearly in front as he rejoins this race, and that's what he wanted, despite Rosberg setting the fastest middle sector of anybody in the race so far. There wasn't enough. Vettel had a big enough advantage before that pit stop, and now he's just got to look after it. Weber on Alonso, and this was how he did it. Alonso went defensive, but he still left a bit the door open. Hamilton in the pits, Massa in the pits at the same time. Seemed to me that Hamilton went much longer than was really necessary, given the, the relative pace he had there. I wonder if uh, we're still going to see some extra stops from some of those up front. Two stops we've seen. There's, he's going nip and tuck with Sutil. This oh, is for position. That's good stuff. And Hamilton just, oh, just gets around. It's De Resta, isn't it? It's De Resta he's fighting with. And uh, Hamilton just about staying in front of Paul De Resta. This is for 11th place. And the two Brits have been racing hard against one another. Of course, there's a little bit of damage on the front wing of De Resta's car, but he goes past. He's got DRS and good spot there in the excitement of where he was running. That's where I made the bad call on which car it was, but, well, this has been a fantastic battle for these oh, two. And Hamilton. Hamilton right down the inside. He left the door open. And, and Sutil side by side for a Woodcut corner with Lewis Hamilton and gets it back. Paul De Resta. Sorry, we're, we're De both Resta. getting confused. We're both getting confused. Oh, and De Resta and Hamilton into Cobb's corner. Oh, this is great stuff for the British fans. I suddenly turned Sutil into a, a British driver for some reason, but this is brilliant for the British fans watching their two heroes go at it so hard. De Resta just in front of Lewis Hamilton. And uh, I wonder whether Hamilton now, with the DRS enabled, should be able to make the move down towards Stowe. Look how defensive De Resta is going. And Benny still holds on, and Hamilton can't get past. Contrasting tyres. We've got uh, Paul De Resta on the option. There's Hamilton on the prime. There should be about half second difference, new to new. That's obviously much less as uh, Lewis almost rear ends. Paul De Resta, as they come out through club, he gets wide, so that Force India is struggling. Uh, on the rear axle, so this has to be a prime chance for Lewis to position his car through turn one, run down into the farm corner and try and get himself into position on Wellington Street. We know he struggled there earlier relative to the Force India. Paul's been driving defensively and fantastically well as they come out of farm, but Hamilton goes for it, they'll be side by side. Fantastic move from Lewis Hamilton. He just judged the entrance to the corner. He took the deep approach. And of course, there's no DRS available to uh, pull the rest of because he was the one in front when they went into that sequence. And Lewis Hamilton timed that to perfection. Well, that's smart stuff. He spent enough laps behind Paul earlier. And I think as Paul was going on the defensive line, Lewis has just gone for a little boost of cares. And uh, well, that's what 80 horsepower at about 100 kilometers an hour will do. Now, is this another example of an unsafe Release, well, actually, no, they're at the end of Pitley and Williams, so that is fair for position. Lewis Hamilton now into 10th place, despite the tyre failure earlier in the race. The other drivers that suffered tyre failures were Massa, he's now 13th, and, of course, our one retirement from the race is Jean-Eric Fern. 21 cars are still running. At the back of the field, we've got uh, Charles Pic running in 16th place, by the way, ahead of Gutierrez. Then Bianchi, 18th, Bottas is 19th, 
Van der Gaard 20th and Chilton is 21st. Well, we know that Rosberg's had a message from his engineer saying that the left rear tyre is under control. You can push now. That's exactly what he's doing, but Vettel has responded. The gap is at 2.1. Yeah, look at the lap comparisons there at the bottom of your screen. Rosberg was quicker for two laps, laps 38, 39, but as you say, Vettel responded on lap 40 with a lap time faster than Rosberg. So it's very little difference between these two, but I think this is telling us a story, David, because Mercedes are able to race at front-running pace, and that isn't what we have always seen. Is it a problem? Problem, problem, problem for, for Vettel, Vettel, the gears. He's in trouble, and Rosberg takes the lead of the British Grand Prix. Vettel in trouble. And the crowd <laughs> cheers, some of them cheering. They uh, seen Vettel, of course, so successful. The championship leader is in trouble here at Silverstone. He's coasting along the pit straight. I can hear the revving as he came into the corner. Listen. OK, I must drive. I must drive, must the gearbox. Well, Sebastian Vettel coasts into retirement. The first non-finish for him of the season. Alonso's been in for a third stop. That's interesting. Ferrari obviously worried about their... The safety car message uh, to move that car. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Sebastian Vettel's first non-finish since Italy last year. And it has brought the safety car out as well. This will bunch the field, of course. Gives opportunities for people like Lewis Hamilton in particular to move further up in that top ten. Alonso just made a pit stop. I don't think that will affect him too much. OK, we're going to box this lap, Nick. We're going to box this lap. And it's going to be a pit stop for the race leader. Interesting. I wonder if they were always planning an extra stop or whether they're just taking advantage of the fact they've got 13.6 second advantage over Raikkonen and it's a safety measure. Get Rosberg in, put a new set of tyres in and don't risk getting a puncture in the, la the last stages. Sebastian Vettel, leader of the World Championship, and suddenly that championship advantage is going to be reduced. His main rivals, Raikkonen and Alonso, are running second and third in this race. Doesn't look as though they will have an answer for Rosberg, but Rosberg's got to come into the pits. He's been asked to come in for, we think, a sort of precautionary change onto another new set of the hard tyres. He's got plenty of time here. His opponents are a little way behind. Doesn't need to be a meteoric pit stop. It's a fairly conventional pit stop. He's on his way. Raikkonen is coming up the start finish straight, but he is well ahead. And Weber also into the pits as well. So Mark Weber going for the final change of tyres. Gary, what drama we're seeing here then. The World Championship leader out of the race, and this one had nothing to do with tyres. No, nothing to do with tyres. Gearbox failure, engine was running completely. If you saw the dash, it was going between zero and one, so just lost the drive. Let's listen, see if we can hear anything. Watch the gears on the left. All working OK there. And then suddenly... Can't find a gear. Yeah, yeah. He's lost the drive. He's, he's actually going down through the gears, but he's lost the drive, so it could be a drive shaft, it could be something else, but he, he just has lost the drive completely. Well, Christian, Hor uh, Christian Horner's uh, shake of the foot there and head in the hands. It had all been going so well for them. The lowest finish that Vettel had had this year up to this point was a fourth-place finish. He's been on the podium so many times. He's had those three wins, including last time out in Canada. But motor racing is like that. Your fortunes can change in a hurry. Away goes Nico Rosberg on it straight away. Raikkonen will try and go with him, but remember, Raikkonen's tyres not nearly as fresh now as Nico Rosberg's. This should be a big chance, but watch out for Weber because he's the one that's likely to go on the attack here. Not particularly close behind Ricardo as they went into the Vale, but there's action going on further behind. Nico Hülkenberg ended up getting passed there by De Resta. So Paul De Resta's claimed a place as he tries to get into the points, having started right at the back of the field here. This is great stuff as the uh, Ferrari having a little sniff down the inside as he go into the farm corner. Yeah, he's trying to get past the McLaren's a lot, so he's got Button ahead of him and then Perez, and then he's got to watch out for behind because Hamilton's there. So we've really got some of our world champions all together in the field fighting in the lower reach of the top ten. Here comes Mark Webber on Ricardo. He's down the inside, makes the move stick. Alonso locks up the left front uh, in the background. Hamilton will like to see that and hope that he gets an opportunity from it. But Webber did not take long to get past Ricardo this time. 
and Alonso with a fresh set of tyres, I think he's going to be able to do likewise. Here we are on the rundown, the old start finish straight, and he's passed before they even get to Cobb's corner. Alonso's in seventh. Wow, oh, you breathe in as he pulled out from behind that McLaren. He always makes such a late move out of the slipstream. And uh, anyway, he gets away with it. Great pass. No DRS available, of course, at this stage. Mark Webber now going to try and close up to Adrian Sutil. Sutil in a podium place for now. Oh, it's contact or a tyre has gone. Who's tyre? That's it, Perez. Perez on the McLaren, yes. No he contact. Could... I think the tyre just let go, but it looked just in the distance there, Ben. Sorry that, that uh, the Ferrari had had to duck out from behind. And will this be another safety car for that debris? It could be. Massa, meanwhile, is trying to get past Button. He's down the inside. Button doesn't want to give it up. And he just holds on in there. Massa cuts back on the exit. Grosjean is behind them. But Button in eighth place. Perez now out of it, clearly, with what looked like a tyre problem. We've got yellow in that sector. But whether they're going to have to bring the safety car out or not, we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, another attempt from Felipe Massa on Jensen Button. But it's not quite there. This is the next opportunity, of course. Coming on to the Wellington straight. He's and going to be through. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance. Perez makes it back. Second time that's happened to him this weekend, of course. Uh, it was in practice that it happened to him. And now uh, Weber's through. Weber's got past Sutil. So Weber is into third place. And he's got Raikkonen and Rosberg up ahead. Well, I think Raikkonen is definitely under threat. Look at De Resta here. De Resta trying to move up. It looks like McLaren being pushed away. They're not having any more this afternoon. Yeah, that's it, I think, maybe for Sergio Perez. A great shame. But there is still some wonderful dicing going on. De Resta trying to get into that. I think De Resta is in front, I think, now of Button. We'll keep an eye on that. So that would mean De Resta's got into the points. There is Alonso. He is in sixth place as they head down the hangar straight. Watch for Mark Webber closing on second place. Kimi Raikkonen. The laps continue to tick away, and Alonso now on Ricardo. The Toro Rosso defending fiercely as the Ferrari driver comes up. He's now going to go try and go around the outside into the veil, and Ricardo has the inside line, but Alonso's got more grip, and he just drives past. And look at Hamilton. Hamilton's going to take advantage at the same time. And Paul Daniel Ricardo loses two places in one go, and he's down in seventh with Felipe Massa, the next one he's got to watch out for. Yeah, but even though he's lost a couple of places, he showed great maturity there, not making it easy, but giving enough space as you see Mark Webber getting lined up for Raikkonen this is them um, going to be coming out onto the Wellington Strait Mark Webber has won this race on two previous occasions he loves overtaking he did this on Alonso last year he goes to the outside this is his favorite spot around the outside but no Kimi Raikkonen takes too much speed in for him there's no way through just yet Nico Rosberg's only a second or so up the road leading this race can Mark Webber get past Raikkonen and hunt down the victory here at Silverstone? Look at him, he's got a great run. Oh, my goodness, he only just flicked out of the slipstream in time. Raikkonen still fighting. They're side by side through Cobb's corner. Wonderful, but Webber has done it. I'm not sure that Raikkonen's going to come back at him. Boy, that was brave. It was brave, and you know what, what else? It was brilliant because he left enough space for Raikkonen and uh, a lesser man would have just driven Raikkonen wide, but they were able to exit that corner side by side. Rosberg is the last one on his list. Alonso trying to get past Sutil. Sutil currently in fourth place. Alonso desperate to get points here, with Vettel failing to score. Perez explaining what happened to Jonathan Neal. And Alonso's down the inside of Sutil, and Hamilton almost as well. Couldn't quite squeeze the Mercedes through. I wonder if he can do it on the exit of club corner. Four laps to go. Rosberg leads by 1.3 seconds from Mark Webber, who was nowhere on the first lap, but is suddenly challenging for victory here. And he was three times faster. Hamilton, Hamilton down the inside of Sutil. No chance for Sutil. Hamilton takes fifth. I was just saying there, Nick Simon, Ben Weber was actually quicker on that last lap as well, including the pass. And, uh, well, it might be a long shot, but he's in the... He's got uh, Rosberg just went through the front of screen there. Yeah. Rosberg's responded with fastest has, first sector. Yeah, he has responded. Rosberg is now pushing a little harder. Perez just taking a look here at Alonso. Now Alonso making the move. This is where the tyre fails. Ah, yes. Goodness. And look how close that was. That's why when I first saw it, I thought it was a result of contact. 
And what about Hamilton? Let's not discount Hamilton. He had a tyre failure and he's fought his way back. He's now in fifth place and he's not far behind Alonso and Raikkonen. Could he possibly still get a podium finish out of this? I doubt it, but you never know. You never know. Weber's taking two tenths out of Rosberg in the first sector. If he can pull another couple of tenths in the second, he's into that DRS zone. They're coming out through Beckett's as we look in our circuit map here and watching those uh, split times. But also keep an eye on Alonso this time because I think he's going to get DRS on Raikkonen. I'm not sure Raikkonen's going to be able to defend much longer. The Ferrari sweeps into third place. Fernando Alonso is heading for another podium finish on a day when Vettel is not going to score any points at all. And Raikkonen has got to watch out because he may drop even further down the pack here with Hamilton bearing down on him and just two laps to go. The Mercedes is still looking fast, lapping at the same sort of pace. You can see, in fact, Hamilton a bit quicker over the last few laps. Behind them, Sutil is just holding on to sixth place. Up front, Weber is quicker than Rosberg on that last lap. 1.3 seconds, the gap. Still not quite within the DRS range. Now, the saving grace of Raikkonen might be, of course, at Hamilton's on two stops this afternoon as well. He's in the quicker car, but he doesn't have fresher tyres uh, significantly to uh, battle with Raikkonen, but he is looking vulnerable. Yeah, the right made an earlier stop, so he has done more uh, laps on these. He stopped on lap 30, uh, so Hamilton has gone fresher. They're not as fresh as Alonso's and Weber's, but it does mean Raikkonen could be in trouble here. Good exit, though, out of Luffield, one of the potential overtaking spots at uh, Cox that deals with that one. Weber's taken another two tens out of Rosberg in the first sector, so he's getting oh so close, running out of time. He is running out of time. But uh, Alonso and Raikkonen looking at an opportunity to really close the points gap to Sebastian Vettel, the championship leader. On board with Hamilton here as he chases after Kimi Raikkonen. Can he get the spot? It would be fourth position, which would be remarkable for him. Meanwhile, Weber is getting a bit closer to the leader. There goes Hamilton. Hamilton takes fourth place and coming from a an exploded tyre. This is a tremendous drive from Lewis Hamilton. Everything the fans could have asked for is now in that fourth position. And we go on to the final lap. So where is Weber? There he is. 1.1 the, the gap. He's almost within DRS range. But it looks as though Rosberg is just doing enough here. Great final sector by Hamilton, by the way. He's just done a, the fastest final sector of anybody. Now he sees still an opportunity there. Let's meanwhile get us back as you see Massa passing uh, Sutil. Sutil in the Force India. But I'm curious to know what's happening out front with a lap to go. Yeah, well, Weber is behind Rosberg as they come down the Wellington straight. There you are, Mark Weber, a double winner of the British Grand Prix. And he's faster than Rosberg in that first sector. He's taken four tens, so he can get in the DRS zone. He, as he goes through Beckett's. He could be on to the hangar straight and well placed to have a go at getting past Rosberg. What would it mean to him to do that? He dropped so far down on the first lap, a terrible getaway. He had damage on the front wing. They had to change that front wing, so a longer pit stop. And yet, Mark Webber is now fighting for the lead here. A remarkable effort indeed from the Australian. And now his last chance is coming up. Meanwhile, Alonso is holding on to third. Hamilton is in fourth. Raikkonen is fifth. Grosjean's out of the race. Another retirement to add to the list. On board with Hamilton as he chases after Alonso. Webber still behind Rosberg. It doesn't look as though he's going to be able to find a way through. The checkered flag is awaiting and Nico Rosberg has just got to hold on for the final turn. Nico Rosberg has done it. Rosberg wins the British Grand Prix by just 0.7 of a second from Mark Webber, who has fought his way through to a podium finish. Third goes to Fernando Alonso, fourth to Lewis Hamilton, coming from the back of the field after his tyre went. Mark Webber set the fastest lap on that very last lap, and a few more laps, David, and perhaps Mark Webber could have won this race. If only. <laughs> That's the story of Mark's career, but great comeback for uh, Webber after that incident to start. Hamilton, well, he didn't get the win, but that's still a good result, all things considered. And this man, Rosberg. Yes, great job, great job, Nico. Excellent job, well done, mate. Woo, yeah, come on! So the champagne spray, a moment that Nico Rosberg has already enjoyed this year at Monaco, and now to do it at Silverstone, and of course, it's a big event coming up for both him and the team. 
in just a week's time because they're going to be racing at the Nürburgring in Germany, his home event, home for Mercedes. And with the sort of performance we're seeing now from both Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, well, you've got to bet they're going to be in the mix at the Nürburgring, just as they have been here at Silverstone. So to confirm the result of that rather topsy-turvy race, Nico Rosberg takes the full 25 today. Mark Webber, a close second on 18. Fernando Alonso also completing the podium with Lewis Hamilton fourth and Kimi Raikkonen in fifth. So in terms of the Drivers' Championship, it looks very much like this. Sebastian Vettel still leading the way. 21 points now the difference down to Fernando Alonso. Kimi Raikkonen in third, 34 behind. Lewis fourth and Mark in fifth. Red Bull leading the way on 219 in the Constructors' Championship, looking for their fourth victory. Mercedes, though, jump ahead of Ferrari. Let's hear from the top drivers. You must have a big smile on your face after all of that today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was quite messy out there, definitely. Um, pity, of course, for the British fans with Lewis going out uh, from the lead um, and then Sebastian stopping and then the road was clear for me. Yeah, but it still still was very nerve wracking because the tires were so on the edge, you know, and they could uh, break any at any moment. And, uh, and I got a tire problem, too. Um, was a bit lucky then with the safety car, so I managed to come in, change the tire, and that worked out, worked out great then, you know, and um, and oh, fantastic uh, to win British Grand Prix, and and uh, especially because the team is so close, so a lot of my team members uh, were here surely, and it's great to give them a win. Will you be leaving Silverstone with a smile on your face after all these years? Yeah, I think tonight when I get back, have a red wine, chill out, and uh, reflect on what's been quite a challenging weekend. Uh, you know, it's it's it's. People, I think, can underestimate and trivialise you know, putting together a whole whole weekend and uh, finishing towards the sharp end is uh, you never you shouldn't take it for granted, and uh, we've done that today. Uh, so I'll be, yeah, uh, have a have a smile tonight, and uh, like you say, Nico deserved the win. Mercedes have been pushing like hell. They got a quick car now in quali, and they're not hanging around the race, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, they're going to be a handful in Nurburgring as well. The result has been fantastic for us in terms of championship. It's uh, very difficult to get uh, 15 points uh, better than Sebastian any weekend of the championship, but even more when you have a difficult weekend like uh, we had uh, here in Silverstone. So definitely uh, a good points uh, in the pocket this weekend, but uh, we cannot uh, forget uh, that uh, we've been uh, not good enough and uh, the next race is in five days' time. We are in the free practice in Nürburgring and uh, we need to race our game because this is not enough. Tell us about the disappointment, obviously, when the tyre went and the safety concern as well. Yeah, I mean, the safety is the biggest issue. You know, it's just unacceptable, really. I think it's, we did, we had that tyre test to develop and improve the tyre and stop this from happening. And after that tyre test, they didn't do anything about it. And to have four blowouts, you know, and it could have happened at high speed and someone could have crashed. And, it, and I was thinking in the race when we were behind the safety car, it's only until someone gets hurt that someone's going to do something about it. But, um, you know, it's obviously, I'm... Um, massively disappointed and, and it is down to the tyres. It's a bit up and down. I uh, didn't quite have the cleanest race I've got to see. Uh, trying to get past Nico, I lost my front wing and uh, fortunately, unfortunately when the safety car came out we decided to change it which probably was the right thing to get on different tyres but we lost about three positions and that was probably down to lost out to Felipe so it was another position, another two laps we probably would have had the likes of Suter and Ricciardo but uh, given the way this weekend's been again, highs, lows, ups, downs, it continues a points run and um, satisfied, I think. And we'll go to Nürburgring and hopefully get three days where we can have a smile on our face. First thing, um, we, we went for Prime because uh, nobody else in front was on Prime, but um, that tire was actually the one that grained front and rear for me, so big problems in the first stint. And uh, we're just trying to you know, wait until a lap we could pit and put the other tire on. The other tire was much better. I was pretty much stronger on that tire, um, much happier, and no graining. So, work that one out. <laughs> um, so, not great. And uh, then when the safety car came out at the end, we obviously had a quite old tires and just sitting duck. You know, I couldn't get any tire temperature. It's one of our issues anyway. But uh, when there's no tri tire tread, you can't get the temperature. So, it was tough. Just waiting for people to pass me, really, and waiting for the end of the race. Uh, we had a gearbox issue. I think uh, fifth gear broke and um, yeah, damaged uh, the rest of the gearbox as well, so that it was not possible to to carry on. Um, yeah, shame because we were in a good position. You know, it's a nice race to win, 
Um, so, yeah, I guess we have to come back next year and try again. Well, a scintillating race and at times quite shocking. David, what is going on with these tyre failures? Well, clearly Pirelli have a real issue. We've seen five failures over the course of the whole weekend. And when it goes, we see the drivers have all been very fortunate that it's been in areas where they could control it. Uh, teams are not happy. Drivers very concerned. Pirelli getting a whole heap of negative publicity. They're more than capable of designing tyres that are strong and robust. They do it for rally cars and other forms of racing. But they're almost a victim of their own success, if you like, in giving us exciting racing by having multiple stops. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, head scratching and some reviewing going on as we get into the second half of the season. We did see some incredible racing, some intelligent drives. Of course, Nico taking all the plaudits, but Lewis Hamilton also starting at the front, going to the back and finishing well. Yeah, Lewis was controlling the race fantastic. They, there's no reason to doubt he wouldn't have done that until the end of the Grand Prix if he did not have the tyre failure. He did. Nico was there to pick up the place when uh, Sebastian Vettel had his gearbox problem. Uh, you know, we had a bit of a topsy-turvy thing with all the safety cars, but mm. in the end, all the drivers are safe. We had an exciting race and a great result for Nico Rosberg. And Mark Webber was the star today as well on his last British Grand Prix. Well, there's a number of good stories out there. For Mark, we thought he was destined to, to be out of the points in his last Grand Prix, but a really storming drive, you know, less than a second behind at the flag. Uh, we also saw some great comeback, as you mentioned, Lewis Hamilton, Paul De Resta, I think, had a very strong race. So a lot of good stories out there as we go into the second half of the season. And also now Mercedes are in front of Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship, so it's all change. It's all getting very exciting in Formula One. And the next race will come to you from Germany. Thank you.